this is like our Valentine episode, guys. Any love birds out there? I don't know how talking is gonna be for me right now because my throat is really like dry and scratchy. You're cutting out. Okay, what? Oh, I muted myself. Okay. Why'd you do that? <laughs> yeah. Welcome back, guys. This is my crime diary with Marcus oh, and Aubrey. There we go. Yep. Thank you for coming back to us. Uh, thank you. Thank you for returning for another listen here at the podcasting. This feels like ASMR. Hey, guys. Ew, back. nobody likes that. Don't do that. Don't do that. But the tapping? Okay. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. <laughs> um, fair warning. I'm a little bit sicky right now, so. This is My Crime Diary, <clears throat> and we're your host, Aubrey. Oh, yeah. Aubrey and Marcus. Sorry, did I not do that right? Yeah, I was going to say your name, and then you were supposed <laughs> to say my name. I got it. Yeah, I got that, but, like, after I said it, so. It's okay. Anyways, you didn't let me finish saying that I'm kind of sicky, so if I clear my throat throughout this, sorry. Would you like to start it off, or do you have anything else to say to our many listeners? How's it over there in India or Belgium? <laughs> well, first, we're covering the case of Denise Huskins. Through, um, she is a 29-year-old woman from or living in Vallejo, California. Such a fun word. Vallejo. I heard a bunch of crime happens there. I think just in, anywhere in the general California area. Our story starts on March 23rd, 2015, when Aaron, also known as A.A. Ron, Quinn, and Denise Husk. That's how I learned how to spell it in my notes. <laughs> this entire <laughs> thing I had to say A.A. Ron every time. We got two main characters here, Denise and Aaron. Denise is our victim. Aaron is her uh, boyfriend, I guess, at the time. And they're both physical therapists. Um, Denise actually met Aaron at, like, she had taken a residency at his place of work um, in Vallejo. And that's how they met. Um, and Aaron had just come out of a relationship and they got together very soon and Aaron's mother had said in some interview that he was kind of rebounding. Also noted that Denise looked a lot like his ex. Amber. Andrea. Andrea. Yes. Um, Andrea Roberts. And they're both like long blonde hair. They're both very I actually don't know what Andrea looks like to a T. I know she has long blonde hair, but I have not seen a picture of her. I have seen a picture of Denise and she's very pretty. And Aaron's is fine. Anyway. <sighs> yes, they both work at the same place. Being as physical therapist. As physical therapist. But mm -hmm. something a little but. spicy that's also working at the same place they work is Aaron's ex-girlfriend. Actually, ex-fiance. Ex -fiance. I didn't know she worked there, too. Um, yeah. I just knew that... I, w I thought we weren't going to get into this yet, but if we're on the topic, Aaron had just broken up with her, yeah. and Because um, she was according, cheap. Yeah, according to Aaron, Andrea had had an affair, and that's why they ended things. Um, but, yeah. What's Mayor? Where this took place. It took place in Mare Island in oh. Vallejo, California. Um, so the actual wait, hold up. Aaron had Aaron and Denise had been together for seven months at the time of the incident that we have not discussed yet. Um but after the seven months, um Denise was kind of like suspect of Aaron and <clears throat> not about to say that. Sassy Baca? Nope. <laughs> I refuse. Um, but she was kind of sus of him. And so she snooped and she checked his phone and um, saw that he had been texting his ex fiance, uh, which her name is Mariana. Andrea. Oh, wait. Why do I have Mariana? Oh, you know what? Mariana is um, his mom's Mariana, name. My bad. I messed it up. Mariana Cross. You're beautiful. I was gonna sing that just to, not to 
<laughs> something Mary. Anyways, but he had been texting Andrea saying that he wanted to get back together with her. And she was like, mm. and so they hold up. And so Denise confronted him about this. What and is that? Sorry. What? What's that TikTok song? It's like receipts. And it's like, you know? No, I don't know. It's from like a reality show. And she's like receipts, photos. I'm like, thinking when you say that, I'm thinking of like the club, another club, bus. Thing. I don't okay, know the receipts one. Um, but anyways, they had kind of like taken a break on that note and um but he had like called her up Aaron had called Denise up and was like apologizing and wanted to like see if they could talk and if she would like hear him out a little bit and that was on March 22nd 2015 is when she ended up going over to his house she brought a pizza um and And anchovies pizza actually is that for real where did it say that in the sources that are in the description well in my source i heard that they just didn't bring booze as well i learned from that they had like a five-hour conversation on the couch maybe my source was not reputable but because there's a videotape of aaron in getting questioned by the police and he says that he had four beers and like a cocktail oh never mind i'm wrong um, but basically, she went over there, they talked it out, and they eventually decided that they wanted to stay together. They both still liked each other. She kind of forgave him. And she said they ended things where it was like, um, like there was still work to be done, but they thought that it was like going good or like they were back on track. And she ended up spending the night over at his house that night. And they're sleeping in Aaron's apartment and or house i'm house right i was about to say is it an apartment i think i think it was a house no it's a house i think so yeah i'm pretty sure it was a house because there was a downstairs i remember because their bedroom was upstairs his bedroom so they're both waking up around 3 a.m in the morning and they're immediately like confronted with like with many people (laughs) That many no they just hear two. one voice but well, we don't know that yet it was at least two people we come to find that out later because she saw two feet like looking down she saw two pair of feet but i don't know that we know that there are multiple people yet she was they were just woken up by someone saying wake up this is a robbery they made so. denise or they told aaron to lay down face like down on the bed Oh, and I then, didn't read that part. And then they told Denise to, like, get on top of him and tie him up. The man who had said, woken them up and said, don't worry, this is a robbery. They had said, like, Don't basically, worry, this is a robbery? <laughs> well, no. They said, wake up, this is a robbery. Hey, and then they worry, basically said, worry. stop it. No. And then they were, ba- I'm paraphrasing, but they basically were like, don't worry. Like, we're not here to hurt you. Um, they said, this is financial. And then, yeah, they had... Denise tie Aaron up with zip ties and then they tied her up and they put them both in the closet and um that's why I was saying Denise while she's on the way to the closet she remembers seeing two pair of legs so that way like when she finally did give her I guess like report or whatever it's called to the testimony I don't know to the police um that's how they know that there were at least two suspects um and Aaron said that while in the closet, he recalled hearing drilling downstairs. So he was hoping that they were just like trying to steal money. Like, I don't know, like they were going to just steal something and leave. Um, and he also heard them like going through cabinets and like opening and shutting cabinets, I guess. So it was like they were looking for something specific, but like he didn't have anything like hidden as far as we know. So like, and you can interject whenever I'm just going to keep speaking but they had put goggles on Aaron and Denise and they were covered in black tape so they couldn't see anything which I don't know like who comes up with that I feel like it's pretty smart I guess it kind of is I was about to say like I feel like there's better ways but I guess that is probably the most efficient way to do such 
a thing. Yeah, but also, then... like, if they're in the closet, how are they saying anything to begin with? Like, oh, and also when Aaron later states that he woke up and there was like a bright light in their face, and then they f- saw like laser or like a laser dot like line red laser you know like you play with the oh and the course. taser it was went a fake... off yeah they had they had used the breaker inners had what is my word in uh intruders the intruders had used it was a fake like laser gun i, I it was like a model gun is what the report said but yeah like with a laser on it that it looked like it could hurt them i guess and yeah, I think they like tasered them into submission. The intruders then put mm-hmm. Aaron said that he could feel like foam going over his head, which was like headphones that, and they started playing like wind yeah, they chimes. Yeah, pre-recorded. Oh, wind chimes! I didn't know that. I just knew they had like pre-recorded messages on them, and they said in the thing. That they were going to give them the sedatives, and if they didn't take them, that they were going to inject them intravenously. So, I don't. So it was diazepam and like the cold medicine Nyquil, and apparently it was a lot because Aaron said that like after he had been given it, he like heard that they took Denise, and then he was still like in the house by himself now. And... Yeah, but he didn't, like, get knocked out that fast because they made him call in, like, sick or, like, excuse himself from his own work and then text, I think, um, Denise's work place. Or, I guess they work at the same, place, the same but, place, but, like, called in sick for her as well, separately. Um, like, as her. And then But he, he kept describing right? them, like, I watched an interview and he kept describing them as being like very strong, which I've never had diazepam, but no, I know, like, know what that is. NyQuil that can, is. but like if I take NyQuil, it it's doesn't dominant. mean like I'm going to sleep. I, yes. Like NyQuil it's doesn't put strong. me to sleep that fast. So it's like I don't taking know a what, Benadryl, like help you sleep, but it's not like you're taking like an Ambien or something. Yeah. Which on that note, why didn't they just give him like an Ambien? Do you know what Ambien know. is? Um, because I know people that take Ambien. It says that it can make you very diazepam. sleepy, diazepam, and it can make you sleep very deeply. You may have breathing problems and difficulty waking up the next morning. It's possible you get addicted to this medication, but you're less likely to get addicted if you take it at the lowest dose. So I guess and, it is strong. Yeah, but I had heard that he was only like knocked out for a few hours i think it was from like 8 to 11 i want to say i guess in the morning but i could be lying well, no, he I'm was not a, no sure. he was asleep from he couldn't really i know he just, woke up around 11 yeah but i think he fell asleep not like right after they took denise but like not <laughs> not many hours after she was taken mm-hmm. so he was asleep for like i mean he got his full six to eight hours so that's good Super good. So, <clears throat> so anyways, um, they had also said before they left, like, we are tracking your phone. Don't call 911. Don't call anything. Oh, also, I forgot to mention, um, whilst they were in the house, they at some point, the little burglars, the intruders, were like, wait, hold up. We got a problem. And he was like, what? And then they were like, um, do you, like, did your ex have, like, does your ex look like Denise? And he was like, ah. And he said that he, he like, just, like, sighed at that moment. <sighs> He's, he said he let out a large sigh. Exasper- because... Exacerbated. Because basically... Spoiler! Spoiler! They were going... And I don't, I still don't really understand why. No, not Denise. I mean, not Denise. They meant to get Andrea. They meant to get Andrea, his ex. And since they both have like long blonde hair and look alike, whatever. I don't know why they expected, like, I don't know if they just didn't know about Andrea or Denise, if they thought Andrea was still like in the pick. And I don't know why they wanted to get, go after Andrea instead. Do we know why they wanted to go after Andrea instead? 
know and it's never explained in like anything okay because they basically were like crap we got the wrong person and then so denise was like oh well should we just like we'll forget about it yeah like and they were like no on your way yeah they were like no yeah, they were like, see what we're going to... I think what they were going to do, like, with Andrew is they wanted to, like, like for whatever reason... Well, no, I think they had... <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> they thought that she had, like, Big Bank, I guess, and they wanted to steal... So their goal was to steal about $20,000. I think it was about... It was 17000 exactly. And they, I guess, for whatever reason, thought or knew or something that Andrew had the means to do- pay them that. But Denise and them... Well, they were with Denise and them, not Andrea. And so she was like, well, like, you got the wrong gals. Um, and they were like, nah, here, this is what we're going to do. And so basically they take Denise as, like, ransom. And they're like, so you, Aaron, are just going to have to, like, find a way to pay me, pay us $20,000. And well, um, no. I don't know. Because later when... Aaron wakes up the next day and his phone goes off. It's it says fifteen hundred dollars, and they ask him to do it in two parts. Seventy. I think that might have just been an initial thing because I know it was twenty overall. Oh, well, anyway, sure on that. it doesn't really matter. Aaron couldn't pay yeah. it because his bank wouldn't could only let him take out so much at a time, and he couldn't yeah. get the enough amount. And then he. Well, didn't also, hear anything from the kidnappers well, again. Well, there's a reason for that because, well, hold up, he, like, realized after he woke up, he was like, crap, what just happened? And then he was like, oh, wait, I have a brother in the FBI. And so he is, like, trying to decide whether or not he should call up his brother because, remember, they said that, like, they had his phone tapped. Like, they would know if he left the premises, left, like, like, called anybody, did anything. And there was a camera in the corner of their room. Yeah. And he was, like, supposed to stay in there. And, but then he, like, I guess remembered what his brother had said, which was that, like, all, like, they're always going to say, like, in ransom cases, like, we have you, like, tapped, don't call 911, don't do anything. But, like, for, if y'all, God forbid, ever need that, they're probably lying. Because who knows how to do that? Not me. But also, I'm not, like, burglarizing people. Anyways, so... Um, you would be a cat burglar. Like, well, like, well, well, ears. <laughs> oh, wait, should I put... No, never mind. Anyways, put what so... On? <laughs> I was thinking about the cat mask that I made for Halloween that I never used. Need to get some use out of that. Um, anyways. Oh, so, we could have a know- Halloween episode and I we dress up. <laughs> That's so cute. So fun. Yeah, we should totally do that. Would it be bad if we dressed up as our... I was going to say favorites. That's very much not the right word. But our favorite serial the killer, killers. The killer we stand most. The killer of the week we relate to most. No. Anyways, so he... After a while, he decides to call his brother. Like, after... like. An awkward amount of time after he woke up to like not do anything. It was a little bit sus later on by like the cops also. Um, so he calls his brother up, and I don't know where his brother lives, but it's not wherever uh, Aaron is living, I guess, because he has to like travel to get there. But he calls him up and he's like, uh-huh. "So, um, Denise, new girlfriend, has just been kidnapped. Uh, they want me to ha- give them like." bunch of bunny what do i do and he was like dude call nine call the police the police always help you the police are always amazing which is super funny because they were like especially unhelpful in this one um but anyways so then i guess he finally decides to To call 911 911 and did you say you had more about like that like phone call because i don't really know anything specifically about the phone call that he had with them yeah, so anyway, police come, and then, like, Aaron goes outside, and they take him back to the station. They f- they look at the camera in the house. They find some blood, which was Denise's. And, and they get, like, a, what is that called? Like, a testament? Like, a statement? Statement. They get a statement. 
from him, and they do not believe. They Mr. said this Adrian. is very sussy, Baca. Very and sus. Because he said that, like, one bit. Well, because he said that I forgot to mention they were while he was like before the uh, people left, the intruders left. I think they still had him tied up, and they like had left him in this room, and they were like, "All right." see ya like you need anything and he was like actually it's a little a little chilly in here and then one of the guys was like oh you're right like I totally like forgot like it might be cold in here like with his wetsuits on so the intruders were wearing wetsuits which I think I apparently that. oh you did okay well sorry so. if that's a repeat but why were they wearing um I heard that apparently, like, that's actually really smart. Hopefully none of y'all are killers. But Does that not if leave, you are, like... don't do that. Yeah, it doesn't leave, an, it, like, leaves absolutely no prints of, like, anything. Because it's, like, clearly full body. Like, the whole story mm. does sound kind of, like, cray. But, like, most ransom cases kind of do. And, and, like, he was wearing, like, so duct like, goggles. One of the biggest things about the case <laughs> is they obviously didn't believe him. And then... A detective from Vallejo PD was named Matt Mustard. Detective Mustard. Yeah. Detective and Mustard. He is a controversial subject, he is, because throughout the story he does some weird stuff. But anyway, there's recordings of him getting interviews from Aaron or statements from Aaron. Mm -hmm. Him being like, which spoiler, this, this but story, like the frog suits was like the exact, or it was frogmen. It's all real. So there ain't no frogmen. Yeah, it's like the exact, like what ended up, ended up being Happened. the case. Detective Mustard told Aaron that the story was so outlandish, and he said in the mess in the recorded message, like he needed to get his puzzle pieces out and make it in a way where he is the monster. He compared him to the. Lacey Peterson, and he goes, Lacey Peterson and Scott, whatever his name was, which is just really ignorant. Peterson? You know. Peterson, yeah. Some deducive, deductive reasoning there. Reasoning there. Mm hmm. Mr. Matty Mustard was a little turd and rude. Yes. Oh, this is just, I don't know, just in case anyone was wondering. Aaron's mom did say, and I think her name was Mariana. I could be lying, though. So, anyways, she had said that he was a good kid, like, all through high school. Because someone had asked her, like, what do you think of Aaron? Or, like, how is, was Aaron, like, a troublesome kid? And she was like, no, like, he was great. He got boy of the year every year, whatever that means. And, like, he was the quarterback of their high school football team. Like, super easy. Anyways. And she was like, and he had... Yeah. He was just a, like a player, and he'd just break all those girls' hearts. All them little cute girls. Always bring him over to the house. So when the police took Aaron in, they, they took, took his, his phone. phone from him, and they put oh, it in airplane mode. These little idiots, them. I'm which sorry. We'll later find out that's... Bad idea. Also, because Aaron told idea. him, like, or Aaron told them, like, he was, like, very Expecting willing, like... <laughs> Yeah, it was like, okay, but they're going to be calling me or texting me because while the intruders were in the house, they had set up, like, they were going to be, they had told him, like, they were going to be contact him, contacting him through text slash email that, like, it was a special email that they had set up for this little interaction. But so they anyways, called the phone twice. Yeah, they called the phone twice whilst it was at the with the cops Stick. on airplane mode so they weren't getting any notifications no nothing it was like probably going which, straight to like voicemail every time which was obviously like pissing off mr intruders and so they went to what was it like the chronicle something like they ended up like i think like the intruders like went to the newspaper or whatever like a journalist or something to like get yeah, their little message they, out they emailed him a voice recording mm -hmm. and it said my name is Denise my name is Denise Huskins I was kidnapped otherwise I'm fine 
Yeah, she was like, otherwise, and it was very monotone. It didn't sound like she was in distress or anything. And she also sounded... gave like special. Oh yeah, she like, gave. She was said there was a, there was a that, plane. Like, it was like... She said there was a plane crash in the Alps earlier today, and I don't remember what else. But the, it was basically the weather, like, so, like to prove something like that. it was today. Yeah, it was like basically to show that it was current, like she was still alive. And I don't know exactly when they oh, sent this. She said her sorry. She said her first concert was Blink One Eighty Two. Oh, so just to like prove that it was actually her, I guess. Yeah. Um. So. At this point, cops and everyone know that she's alive. I think it was the same day, actually, because all this was has happened in 48 hours. Oh, okay. Well, why didn't you stop me in that? I thought it was had been weeks. No. Okay. It had been... No, she seven... was gone 48 hours. That's it. Oh, okay. And so every... Denise's family lives about f- almost four to 500 miles away in... California. And it was New with, Hampshire, with, right? New Hampshire is like California. where they don't make me sound stupid right now. I feel like it was New Hampshire. I'm pretty sure it was. It's New Haven? where I don't know. I think it was look it up. I think it was New Hampshire. I don't know. Where is New Hampshire? Oh. Wait, hold up. Am I really stupid? New Hampshire is a, ta- a state. That's what I wait, thought. Wait, hold up. <laughs> No, there's a New Hampshire, California. Thank you very much. Oh, wait, JK. No, there's not. Never mind. I'm stupid. <laughs> I promise. I, I I do have a few brain cells. but Anyway, it was a long 400-something miles away, but it was still in California. But her family, once they heard that like everything was happening with Denise, they all started going, traveling up to Vallejo mm, yeah, to yeah, yeah. like help in the investigation because... That's where they thought, like, she would be. Everything was going down. Yeah. And so then, they're all not near their house. And Denise's father gets a notification that on his, like, little camera, like, ring doorbell or something. And he says, he immediately sends it to the police and he's like, it's her. It's her. And it's a video and it's Denise walking. Hold on, I'm fixing my hair again. Anyway, and so... Her dad tells the police that the video of her and Denise okay, wait, is yeah, walking very no. casually door to door kidnapping service. But dropped her off like on the side of the road in her hometown. Also, well, not fun fact fact. Apparently her mom said that she was like sexually assaulted as a kid in that like hometown. Oh, yes. Oh, oh. Detective Mustard said that women well, usually it's not uncommon for them to dramatize or fake being assaulted sexually. Oh, I didn't know again, that. Again, again later in life, just so they can feel the thrill of it. What? He, he also won cop of the year that year. That sounds about right. Hold on, pause for a moment. What are you Hold doing? up. Making sure that there's not a mirror behind me. No, I'm. I'm just because Sarah's back and she's changing, and I we're just for her. Oh. I see it all. We should start an OnlyFans. Your damn fans. podcast would blow up if my tits were on it. I tell you that. <laughs> they really would. We should just... Just like in the like very corner. She's always in the back, just naked. <laughs> like, in the, like a teeny tiny... Like in a mirror of a mirror. Okay, she's closed on now. There's just guys like... Great episode, guys. I love this Great one. episode. <laughs> really love the backdrop. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't hurt to run. Sorry. Uh, so police come mm-hmm. and escort Denise because they want. Was she? Know, I think she called the neighbor or something, right? Like nobody, basically the nobody's saw in town. Her. Yeah, oh yes, the neighbor, the neighbor saw, saw her. her outside and was like, "What are you doing, baby? Come inside. Are you okay?" And so then she went in the neighbor's <laughs> like house, and then apparently, um, like she called her dad, but he missed the call from her, or he saw that he had missed a call from her. And he went, he called the police immediately, which, like, I guess good on him, but also, like, he didn't call his daughter back first. So, kind of weird. Um, and, like, then, like, everyone's just playing phone tag with each other, basically. Like, no one can get a hold of anyone. Everyone's like, wait, she's back? What? Yeah. Anyway. So, when the police get to the neighbor's house, they obviously interview her, and... 
they ask if the kidnapper sexually assaulted her or touched her, made her do anything that she didn't like want to do, and she said no. Really? And it's later. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know she said no. That's said not that, true. It's, yeah. Mint. And it's later she tells she comes clean and says that um the kidnapper told her that there are two things that she can't do when talking to the police because since Aaron went to the police they knew that she would eventually have to give a statement with, to the police and the two things that she could not say at all were one that they were in the army or military and two that he raped her should, we should have put like a trigger warning yeah, we can put that in the little description. Basically, as the news report that I read said, like, she said that he forced her to have sex twice. And but... Now, so. we can talk a little bit about the 48 hours that Denise was gone. She was taken from Aaron's house and immediately put into a car and driven and she said she was trying to count like we turned right we turned left like but it was just like too much for her to keep track of and they eventually stopped and then the kidnapper took opened the trunk and said like if you scream or make any noise like it's just gonna get worse for you and so she didn't do anything she didn't scream and the kidnapper took her out of the back of the car and then put her into a different car and she tells the police that it the sound of like the engine reminded her of a Mustang which she was right about that it would be later oh, found that, that it was a Mustang that Good the kidnapper had stole and oh. so she was right about that and so then they took her to a cabin and so then yeah they took her to her cabin and she Chase said cabin. that she was put in a room and she was barefoot because she was wearing like she just Woken got ripped out they, of bed. Like, yeah. And so she's put in this room and she still has the goggles that are blacked out. Blacked out. And I don't really know much about like her time in it. She doesn't like, say in like the cabin. about that day. She says she remembers that she could hear music playing in French music actually from the living room and that he was like cleaning like vacuuming and stuff and so and so then he comes in the room and tells her that there's been a mistake and that this wasn't meant for her and this is when she finds out that it was meant for Aaron's ex fiance. Oh, I thought she already knew that, like at the house. No, she finds it out when she's already taken, because then she's like, oh. what the heck? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'd be pissed. He's like, so we're trying to figure out, like, you know, what to do. What to do, because you're the wrong person, because we work for the black market. And we're a giant organization. And she's like, okay. And he comes, he leaves, comes back later and says, okay, so we actually figured out what we're, we need to do here. Um, so we actually are going to have to have sex with you and we're going to record it. So just in yeah, case you I don't, talk to the police. Oh, is it just like She tells her that blackmail? like it's blackmail if she goes to the police that they will release it. And it's well, really Well, if she goes the to Netflix. the police, like how can how can they release it because they going to be in prison, mm -hmm. I guess. Preach. I guess they could. Preach, girl. And so in the Netflix documentary American Nightmare, it's Denise telling the story of her time there and it's actually like super oh. yes and just like her describing it and stuff it's just I'm super sorry I had to fix it Hold on. and I like never whatever I read didn't like 
cover as much about her time actually in the cabin, but obviously yeah. it was. And so then after the first assault happened, he left and he took her out of the room this time and he she's quoted in the documentary saying i felt like he was conditioning me like you've been a good girl you get a reward now because he after he assaulted her he took her to the bathroom and was like you're now allowed to take the goggles off when i'm not in the room with you and she remembers she talks about how she remembers taking them off and like looking in the mirror and just feeling like so like out of bodied like this isn't like i'm sorry for that girl that's going through this right now and she said that she then then she took a shower and she stayed in there a while and then later once she was back in the room she's woken up to a knock like him knocking on the door so she puts the goggles on and he comes in and says like my associates are here at the house like i have to give you another dose of the sedative um, whatever they want, you have to do because they're not as nice as I am. And so she hears a car pull up. She hear, And then she hears voices in the living room area and then hears the car drive off. And then he comes back in the room and is like, hey, so actually bad news. You're not going to like this. So actually, we're going to have to have sex again, but this time you're going to have to look like you want it and that you're consenting. So it looks more like we're having a long-term affair this whole time. Instead of it being, like, bad on them, like, bad looking on yeah. them or something. Yeah. Oh. And so, and he also told her that he figured out that he could just tape her eyes shut so it could look like she was, like, having an affair. And not being kidnapped. Oh, like that. So it's both like of these not are so clear that like she's wearing like goggles. I guess. Yeah, like that because he doesn't want her to see him. But oh, so it can look like she's just trying to be like suspicious, like mysterious, and rather than like. Well, no. It just if she has tape over her eyeballs, it's just making it look like like she doesn't have anything on. But like for it to be tape that like she can't see through. It's going to be like black tape, which means you'd see that in the video, wouldn't you? Unless it just doesn't show her face in the video. Am I wrong? Well, even if it was clear tape, I'm sure her, her eyes would be like... Oh, yeah. Sorry. Okay, so he tells her that they're going to have to have sex again. And after, before that happens, he leaves for a second and she takes the goggles off and sees that he's set up like two little bottles of like vodka and then two glasses of wine and she said she chugged both of the shots and then a whole glass of wine and when he came back in he like made a remark like oh, you started without me Ew. and she says that she remembered just like being like so angered by like that comment mm, and so yeah. after she's assaulted he comes back later and says, I want to show you something. And he sits next to her. And then she, like, takes the goggles off just a little bit to, like, see what he's showing her. And it's his phone. And it's a video of her dad being, like, a statement to her. Like, if you're out there, like, we're all here looking for you. Like, don't worry. And she said that this was the first time that she, like, broke down, actually, and started, like, crying a lot. And she remembers probably like brought her back to like reality. Yeah, and the kidnapper put his hand on her shoulder and was like, "It must feel real now, doesn't it?" Oh, that's and, POS. And then he said, "Then he was like, okay, time to take you home now." And this whole time, she knew that he was telling her that she would go home in forty-eight hours, but she didn't want to like believe that because. Well, also, have they been paid at this point? Because, like, I'm wondering, no. like, what made them be like, okay, like, we can take her back now. Yeah, he's a really strange guy. Like, also, like, I'm so bad, confused but, because like, it, it was, like, two people at first, but then is it just, like, one person doing all this mostly? I never like, clears I'm... that up. The police okay. don't look into anything further. Because I was confused about that, too. 
Um, so can I go ahead and talk about who this man is? Yes. So his name is Matthew Muller. Matthew Muller. He doesn't deserve that little crazy sound. Matthew Muller. Anyways, okay. <laughs> he was a, he had been a practicing immigration attorney in San Francisco. Um, and he, he was graduated from Harvard Law. I was getting there in 2006. And, and he was um, in the military. Also getting there. He was in, he was a U.S. Marine from 1995 to 99. Yeah. And basically, yeah, as Mark just said, like, he was, I guess, what was it like working as, in the black market? I didn't guy. really know about that. Yeah, just generally. We don't know like, if this awful. is true either. It is important to note that, that all of the black market stuff and that's never confirmed or like, if he was just a creep by himself saying all this or cause many speculate that the voices Denise heard in the living room were just recordings that he was playing to make her think that there was, that more was people multiple. involved. Oh yeah. That because could, that could be the case later. There's found like a blow up doll in his house. Like a sex has, doll? Or like a like human know. doll. It look no, it's like looks like a human. I don't know, and it oh. has a mask on, and it has like clothes on to look like an actual person. Like if it was mm -hmm. at night or something, you would yeah. think that it was another person. That I wonder if that was what was going on in like the house too, since she just saw like, feet. How is he? Is he holding it like with him? Like yeah, I mean, like setting it. Like no, no, no. But basically. So the way that he comes into the picture or like the way that, cause like she doesn't really know anything about him. Like other than like the few details that we've already said, like there's no way for her to identify him. She's never seen his face, et cetera. Just like it's important to note that Aaron and Denise haven't talked to each other since the incident happened, but their stories are aligning perfectly, which is good. And for Aaron. Yeah. Or both of them. Well, because yeah. Because then she, she, Denise talks about in interviews how for those hours, that 48 hours, she was always thinking like, how am I going to survive this? And she, and she says like, I never thought I would have to ask that same question once I got released from my kidnapper. Mm -hmm. And so the media, so the, hold on. So she goes and after her interviews, the police are like, Mm, still not real, we don't think. Um, it's actually a big hoax. And so they set, they well, yeah, and they had said first conference, and they're like, she wasted valuable, Denise Huskins has wasted valuable time what? and money of from our community. And like, there's like actual news, like things of this. And so they're just like making her into like this, like a mockery of it as and then she's become known as the real life gone girl because a year before this took place the movie gone girl came, came out. out and which, it's really not even like similar storylines like hardly at all well like the storyline is that the wife and the husband the wife finds out that he's cheating so she like stages her like murder her, like kidnapping or murder yeah or and like to make it, him framed for murder so um she the movie she frames her husband for murder and then she pops back up alive and it's like oh Sorry. and she wants it to do, like heal their relationship kind of so they're like this is the same exact thing and so she's but it's getting, like, just like not and also like they still don't believe aaron as far as i know so it's like they're not even on his side either and like yeah, they did write her side, at first but... by like suspecting him like it was like fair enough to like suspect him at first but like at the same time they were just being like stubborn like they didn't want to solve the case like even when there was like all the signs that it was just not him and yeah. like that like their story just like wasn't accurate and so um, at the when the media is portraying her as like this hoax the same news company that got the recording of Denise's proof of life gets several emails being like, this is the kidnapper of Denise Huskins. Like the police need to acknowledge that this is not a hoax. And then like 
nothing changes. She's still a hoax in the media. And he emails like tons and tons of times to this reporter and the reporters are like sending it all to the police and stuff. And they're just ignoring it completely. Yeah. Because they're just like willfully being like ignoring it. Like they're just like, don't want to solve the case. Like, cause it would just be kind of a pain and it wouldn't like really make them look great. I guess at this point, like the police had said that, like they had told Aaron at the beginning that like, they had no reason to believe that this was a stranger abduction, like all this stuff saying that like, there was no like possible way it was this and like everything they basically said that it wasn't it ended up being just that should i go into matthew more so um it just so happened while all this is being take or taking place like the media is still ignoring i guess the truth of the matter and i don't know how long it took exactly i know I don't know how long it was in between this, but basically the real intruder, the real kidnapper, he was um, arrested on June 8th. Remember, this all happened in, what was it, March? March 23rd? The night it all went down was like March 22nd, 23rd. So this is now June 8th, and Matthew Muller, Mr. Intruder Man, was arrested, but not for this, but on charges of a separate home invasion um by the dublin police services of the alameda county sheriff's department and in this case he had tried to abduct or he had tied up a couple broken into their home tied them up and he was trying to abduct their the family daughter presumably for ransom basically the same situation um and while investigators were well investigating that case they had found a phone that was later tied back to matthew Mueller, and um then furthermore so that's how they got like him on the radar and then um they were searching his cabin in south lake tahoe tahoe um and they found evidence for denise's case um they found the videos of the rape videos and um they found um they searched a car a storage locker um, also the cop that like really drove the case for denise um her name's misty karusu i'm definitely saying that wrong but she is an amazing cop and she did amazing work and she never backed down never backed down never what but i haven't heard her name much so that is important um so finally in 2017 remember the salt went down in 2015 so now it's been two years and he's finally sentenced 40 years for the kidnapping of denise puskin um though i will say so in his his defense attorney during the trial he had, I guess, Matthew Muller, he had been diagnosed with um, as manic and depressive. Um, and it was like called, quote unquote, like Gulf War illness. Not entirely sure what it is, but they also said like it was, he was also just diagnosed with like bipolar disorder. Another... So they were trying to get him 30 years instead of 40 years. That didn't but, work, I though. Mean, doesn't really. Yeah, he was just a weird guy. There was another incident where he broke into a woman's house and, like, attempted to rape her and, like, got on top of her and tied her up and stuff. And then, like, she was, like, pl- like, she told him that she'd already been raped before. And he, like, oh was still going to do it. And then he was, like, I can't do this. And then he, like, untied her and was, like, you should really get a dog. It'll help incidents like this from happening again and she was like okay and then the police that she called the police and they were like are you sure you just didn't dream are you sure you that wasn't just a dream she has like marks that's that for real Mm -hmm. that's yeah basically he's just an awful person a creep i'm trying not to say anything freak bad he's a creep and a half and now he's serving his sentence I'm in the federal Shh. that's not even the words i'm a weirdo 
the hell am I doing here? I love that song, actually. <laughs> Please don't leave that in. <laughs> Anyways, he's serving his time. Oh, I keep forgetting my mascara on. I kept rubbing my eyes. He's in Federal Correction Center in Texan, Arizona. And pretty sure it's like maximum security, I guess. I don't know, but I don't know. I feel like 40 years is kind of light. Is that just me? For like m- having multiple rape allegations slash like convictions i'd imagine and another home invasion like i didn't hear anything about him actually being tried for that other attempted home invasion slash kidnapping yeah no so basically did you say how they found him by checking the phone that he left well i didn't know he was i said he was tied by the he was tied to the second case the second kidnapping by that phone that they found on the crime scene and so that's how they like first got him on that yeah. case and so and then they once they were searching him was, oh. well no how they did that was they they tracked the phone number and like called who pays for it and it was his mother and she was like mom my, my son's name is matthew moeller and then they were like um oh, I didn't where know that. is he uh where does he live and then she was like oh he lives in my cabin down in <laughs> and like gave them the address in south something tahoe South we Lake love Thomas. our mothers here. That convict their sons unknowingly. Woo! Well, yep. That's about so, it. if y'all want some more real time interviews and stuff, go watch American Nightmare, which is on Netflix. It's very good. So true. I did not have a chance to watch it, but I did want to. I might still watch it. I did. But I hope y'all enjoyed this case pretty hope y'all had fun tragic blast if anyone has i don't can they like leave reviews and stuff or like leave suggestions for other cases y'all can visit our website www.mycrimediary.net you should also like yeah plug in plug all of our we gotta you can follow us on instagram my dot crime diary that's the only thing that was available i'm sorry everything else my crime diary uh, just one word. Follow us there. We're gonna become way more active with Aubrey's help. Way she has the active. sign-ins now, and Yay. Um, yeah. Remember to like and subscribe, and just give a big thumbs Download. up. You know? Download. Post Hit the show. Stop. Mash that like button, guys. It really There's helps no us like here button. at my. At, it really helps us here at my crime diary. MCD. Yeah, I already have MCD, you know, and my notes. My teeth look yellow. What else? Wait, that could be a cool logo. And oh wait, no, C is not. Not really. Straight. Also, be looking out. We might have a new logo. Maybe that might be a lie, but. Well, this will come out. We might in almost a it. week, so. Maybe we'll have a new and logo maybe we'll be by the time by this is out. True. But just be on the lookout, guys. Make sure you go to our websites. Sign- Put your email in, so, um, yeah, Um, engagement, yeah, do all that stuff. Yeah, great show. Aubrey, Aubrey, take us out. You have to say such a slip. That is not going to be, like, my little trademarked phrase. Absolutely not. See you next time. This has been your crime. I was going to say one other thing. Oh, yeah. Wait. No. I don't know what What? I was going to say. I don't know. I forgot. Hope you'll have a fab Monday and rest of your week. Peace, love. Bye. Maybe that can be my little saying. Peace, love. Bye. That's, oh, okay. Bye.